Hi, I'm about to give the car its service and before I start that I do want to check that we haven't got any problems with any of the modules in the vehicle. So before I do a service I always scan it for codes just to see if there's any clues as to anything that might not be working properly that I haven't already noticed. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show the King Boland K7 which is new to me. And this looks like a really nicely fully featured uh, diagnostic tool at a reasonable price point for all of the functions that are on here. The tablet itself is actually really quite nice. It's got a really high resolution 7 inch display. I'm not sure if you can see that but the pixel density is really quite high so this is as good as you get on any kind of modern tablet or phone. It's got Android 10 on this particular tablet with um, 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage which is enough for all of the software plus the ability to store some videos, photos and uh, some of the reports that you might want to generate using this tool. It's also got a 6 amp hour battery which would allow you to do diagnostics for pretty much the whole day and then it's also got um, dual band Wi-Fi so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi so you can download your updates and that kind of stuff really quick on here. 17 different languages and it also has a Bluetooth 5. Now the tablet itself is wireless to the vehicle interface. So we have a little dongle here that we can plug into the diagnostic port and that communicates wirelessly with the tablet device itself. This does need charging separately. It comes with a USB cable and a power adapter so that you can charge it uh, when you're not using it. And then in terms of the software on here, this one has three years of updates, which is actually quite generous. Um, a lot of the other tools only have one year of updates, sometimes two, but three um, does mean that at the price point that this is at, uh, it will last you a good long time and it's actually a reasonable value for money. If you do want to continue using it after that period, uh, you can go into the shop on here, I think it's on the store, and buy the software. At the moment, um, it doesn't show any of that because I've already got it on the license, but you'll be able to purchase software as needed uh, if you want to use it past that three-year period. So lots of functionality on here. You've got your usual diagnostics with the OBD, automatic scanning, uh, and that kind of stuff. But then we've also got the bi-directional controls and active tests, which allow you to, uh, depending on your vehicle, allow you to control and actuate some of the sensors. Uh, the Ford that I'm driving here doesn't actually have that many functions built in and the functions aren't down to the tablet itself, it just unlocks that capability. So modern cars, particularly um, you know the, the German types, have a lot of different active tests that you can do. You can activate all the exterior lights and all of the solenoids and other actuators inside the car. Uh, this one's a little bit more restrictive in terms of what you can do in terms of that diagnostics. Uh, it does allow you to do some coding functions as well. So again, depending on your capabilities of your vehicle, you might be enable, able to enable certain types of functions like automatic locking, uh, whether you flash the lights when you've locked the vehicle and other things like that. So I think what we're going to do now is plug it in and see how it behaves when we start scanning the car for error codes. So as you can see the car is due for its service. We've got the dongle plugged in to the diagnostic port down there with the green light and what we'll do is we'll try and auto search. This doesn't always work on every vehicle, sometimes it has trouble uh, with the communications protocol but we'll try and auto search here. And there you go, you can see it's detected that it's the Ford. We'll connect to it by clicking on Euro Ford. Make sure the car ignition is on. And if you haven't started the car, at least connect it up to a battery maintainer so it doesn't drain the battery during the scanning. And there we go. So we can go to health report and that will basically scan all of the modules and look for any error codes and then basically give you an overall summary of all of the modules inside the car. Depending on the vehicle this can take quite a long time. Normally it's quite quick in this vehicle. I think with most other scan tools it normally takes about a minute or so to go through and check all the possible variants of the vehicle with different modules installed. So the ones with the grey that means it's either not found it or it's not installed on this vehicle. Um, if it's got a green tick, that obviously means that there's no problems with it, and the ones with something red means that it has some kind of trouble code associated with that module.
So a few trouble codes in there, some to do with the body control module, the driver front door module, instrument panel, passenger door module. So what we can do is we can have a look at those individually. Let's look at the body control module. Read fault code. Uh, we've got one for the license plate light, that's because we've got some LEDs fitted. We can actually swipe on this tool as well. So this one supports gestures on the screen, I think that's part of it being Android 10. Um, we can have a quick look at the modules um, by clicking on the expand here. So I think again, yeah, we've got issues associated with the fact that we've got some LEDs fitted, which is pretty normal, but none of the other modules are complaining. So no issue with the engine management unit here. But if we click on the right arrow, that allows you to go into the detail about that particular module. So then you can do some more detailed analysis or some of the programming features. So here we can click on the module information. That just gives you some information about the module. Uh, depending on the vehicle, you may get more information here and it may also tell you things like the stored uh, mileage that's stored in that module. Read fault codes, we shouldn't have anything here. It didn't flag up anything before. No DTCs, that's good. Uh, if we did have a problem, we can click on clear fault memory. And then we've got some of the other things here. So read data stream. I've showed this many times in many of these tools, but this allows you to read some of the live data from the module. So we should be able to select a whole bunch of these to look at. Um, you can even select all of them. But normally what happens is the more you select, the slower the update data rate because there's a limitation on how much data we can transfer over the OBD connection. So we'll pick a few here, press OK. And you can see we've got these updating in real time. If I blip the accelerator, you should see things like the load value increasing. And then if we want to look at a graph of the live data, so let's have a look at that calculated load value. If we tick, uh, click on the little graph icon at the end of that row, then it will show you that data in real time. And again, if I blip the accelerator, you can see that updating. And then you can actually plot some of these together. Now, I'm not sure what the limitation is. On many of the tools, it's four different modules that you can, uh, sorry, four different data streams that you can view at the same time. So let's see how many we've got. So normally four, and yeah, it's grayed out the others. So four is the maximum number that you can plot at once. And it plots them all on the same graph like this. I'm not sure if we can plot them onto four different graphs in this instance. No, it just combines them all onto the same one. I think that's reserved for the larger screens, which kind of makes sense. So that's the live data. And pretty much, depending on the vehicle and the module that you're connected to, you'll see a variety of different things that you can view on here. Then we've got the actuation test. We'll click on there. This is some of the bi-directional controls. Now, as I said, on this particular model of car, there is hardly any functions that you can actually control from the scan tool. So this one just has a mobilizer identification stored, but on many of the other cars, it will have all kinds of things that we can change. We'll check some of the other modules because some of those have more functionality. And then we've got special functions. So if we click on the special functions here, it will have some of the things like correcting the uh, learned values. So you might want to reset them if you've changed something. Uh, you should be able to code the injectors from here. So if you've changed the injectors on a system with a high pressure fuel rail, then you'll need to put in the calibration values. And this will allow you to do it on here. And there should also be things like um, yeah, doing a static regeneration on the diesel particulate filter. So these are the kind of service functions that you wouldn't get on a more basic scan tool. Um, we've also got uh, OBD functions on here. And this is basically the generic OBD data. So sometimes what can happen is you're getting some uh, readings on here and everything looks completely normal, but you know that a sensor has gone bad. And the, um, the generic data allows you to see the actual data that's being picked up by the PCM. What we were looking at before with the live data 
is the interpreted data. So even if some signal is missing, the PCM or some other module might might try to make sense of the data that it's got available and infer some values. So if you're having a problem with a sensor and it's not showing up in live data, it's well worth going into um, the generic OBD data. And then we can have a look at some of the uh, live data. So let's click on read live data. And again, we can click on some of these and press OK. And again, it will show those in real time without any uh, interpretation by the module that you're looking at. We'll go into the body control module. Sometimes this one has some more actuation tests. And then in this one, uh, we've just got a few settings that we can change. So visual feedback for lock, and that is whether it flashes the indicator lights when you've locked the vehicle. And that's currently set to yes. And we should also have the same thing for unlock. If you did want to change that, then we can actually do that from here. So we can click on the item and then on the right hand side of the screen it says no or yes so we can change the setting and again depending on the vehicle that you've got there might be a whole array of things that you can change on here uh, and effectively code different settings into your vehicle. Now rather than delving into various modules when you're trying to find something you can actually click on common function here and this will list out all of the various functions that you can perform on your vehicle so things like um, DPF regeneration, you might want to reset your tyre pressure monitoring system after you've replaced uh, or refilled the tyre. We've got things like injector coding, odometer reset and some of the changes here, uh, some of the things to do with airbags and that kind of stuff. So rather than delving into all the individual menus, there is this common functions section where you've got all of your service functions for your car if you're doing some work on any of these particular modules. Then we've got module programming, let's click on that. and we can click on programmable module installation and again depending on the vehicle that you've got and whether it needs any specific uh, functionality you might be able to change the module on here and then code it into the system using this menu here. Going back to the main screen we've got this repair info section just here that's worth a look. Um, so there are various things like the Chrome browser so you can just literally search for stuff while you're using this tablet without having to go to a computer, you've got a calculator um, and then we've got a library of fault codes as well as a user manual. So this one doesn't have a specific diagnostic license or anything like that. So on the more expensive tools, what you're really paying for is kind of a knowledge base of common issues, uh, service bulletins, that kind of thing. This one doesn't have that, but it does allow you to look up what certain codes are and also browse the internet should you need to try and search for the issues. And then one nice thing about this particular scan tool, if you click on module, you can actually connect some additional devices to this tool. So there are things like a automotive oscilloscope, a battery test unit, uh, printers, video scopes, and a tire pressure monitoring um, programming tool. And essentially, if you have any of those additional devices, you can link them to this tablet and use the tablet as the user interface for those devices. So unfortunately, I don't have the oscilloscope. If we clicked on oscilloscope here, then you'd actually be able to view all of the traces and control the oscilloscope functions from this tablet device, which means that it's more than just a simple scan tool. You've got the additional functionality. Uh, you know, same thing with the video scope. If you have the video scope, you can plug it into the USB port on the top, and then you'll be able to use the screen on this tool to look at what the camera is looking at. When we were looking at the health check, we had all of those service functions. We've also got it on the main screen. So if we click on reset here, this is all of the various resets and programming sections that we've got on the scan tool. So again, we can code injectors from here. We can reprogram the seat module, change the odometer readings, enable or disable stop start and all those types of things that you might want to do from here. So this is just another way of accessing it in a slightly better user interface than what was there before. So that's the King Bolan K7 diagnostic tool, and I think this is ideal for what I would consider the professional DIYer, especially with its three years of updates, means that you get a reasonably decent service life out of it before you have to start paying for updates. And it has a lot of features on here, 
at a really decent price point. So this is looking like one of the better options if you're looking at spending just um, the low couple of hundred pounds on a diagnostic scan tool. So I'll put a link to the Amazon listing of this item in the description down below. If you've got any questions about the device, don't forget to leave those in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer any queries that anyone may have. But I hope you found the video useful. And until next time, thanks for watching.